we're joined by Brent Hubs of VolQuest.com. Brent, how are you this morning? I'm doing great. Hope you guys are well. Yeah, good morning to you. Brent, I appreciate you joining us. Let's jump right into the scouting report of Creighton and Tennessee. I know that Rick Barnes had some thoughts about the comparison to a team that the Tennessee has already played this season, and he threw out Alabama. What do you make when you hear that comparison between Creighton and the Tide? Well, I think both of them offensively play kind of through analytics in some ways. Mm -hmm. Now, Alabama's a little more emphatic about the analytics than I think uh, Coach McDermott and Creighton is, but the, the concept is the same. Creighton wants to score at the rim with layups and dunks, or they want three three point shots. A fifteen foot jump shot's not exactly high priority in the Creighton offense when you watch them play. So spread the floor, a lot of middle ball screen, uh, creating help defense, forcing guys in gaps, and, and hopefully it leaves guys open. And when they do, Creighton makes you pay, and that's how Creighton won in overtime against Oregon. Oregon got got sucked in a couple of times and ended up with open threes and Creighton knocked them down. So very similar to what a lot of what Alabama does when you look at Sears, the point guard for Alabama, kind of the way he gets in the paint and creates some action there that he can kick it out from three-point shooters. He, he's a good interior passer that can get to the big man or he can finish at the rim. And uh, there's some similarities to the styles of those two teams because Everybody's like, you got to limit Creighton's three-point shooting. Well, they're going to take the shots. What you got to hope is that they're not going to make a bunch of shots. Mm -hmm. You're not going to prevent them from shooting the three ball because that's who they are. That's their DNA. So it's very similar in that way to Alabama. I love the playing through analytics because I think that's spot on. And I just in getting ready for this week, kind of capping, and I was looking at some stuff Jordan Moore put out, who does some work for overtime there locally. And you're right on. He said Creighton. Uh, has the, the second lowest rim attempt percentage and second highest three-point percentage through two games in the tournament. Conversely, Tennessee is one of the best rim three-point defenses in college basketball. They, and he got that from shot quality. And they're number four nationally throughout the course of the year in rim protection and three-point defense. Which do you see kind of giving if both teams play to their trends? Well, I think here's the challenge for Tennessee. Part of that rim protection comes from the fact that defensively, Tennessee plays in gaps, and Jonas Adu is a pretty good rim protector, but they play a lot of help defense. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of help line defense. Um, they don't pack it in, but, but they play in gaps. And what happens is you've got to find that balance between being gap help and being able to close out on a three-point shooter. So I think if you're defending Creighton, the first priority is you can't you can't give Creighton wide open threes to get in a rhythm shooting the basketball from beyond the arc. So you might have to give up a little bit of rim protection, help defense, and hope that Jonas they do Tennessee's big man can stay out of foul trouble and protect the rim. Because I don't know that you can dive in and help as much. Because if you get if you get too many guys in the paint against Creighton. They're going to make you pay from the perimeter. And Coach Barnes, I was talking to him last night, and one of the things he made mention of, he said the harder, one of the harder parts of defending Creighton is you just can't relax in, the, in a possession for 40 minutes. Because the minute your guy gets rid of the ball or he sets a screen, he's spreading to a spot for an open jump shot. And if you don't sprint with him all the time, He's going to, if you get a little lazy or if you get a little relaxed or you ball chase a little bit or ball watch, you're going to give up a three. And that'll be the challenge for Tennessee's defense because it's not just Creighton standing around the perimeter waiting mm -hmm. for a kick out. Those guys are moving all the time to create open looks for themselves. Mm -hmm. We're talking with Brent Hubs of VolQuest.com. Brent, uh, obviously Dalton Connect gets all the headlines and rightfully so. But if Tennessee has to go to a second option, who do you think can be an X factor offensively for the Vols? Well, th th they have a three kind of not a three headed monster, but three guys carry this team, mm. um, and, and that's Jonas Adu, Zakai Ziegler, and Dalton Connect. And if you look at them throughout the year, they have scored the bulk of the points. And when when those three combine for uh, fifty points or more, I think they've lost twice this year. Okay, so th they're the kind of the catalyst. Now the question is. Do you get nine from Josiah Jordan-James? Do you find 11 points like you found with Tobey Awaka 
who is that fourth guy who's going to get you eight to 10, eight to 12? That could be a difference maker for you if the big three aren't playing really well. And, and that's what happened in the Texas game. Those big three were struggling. Now, Connect ended up with points at the end, but in the first half, he was it was tough, and, and Ziegler didn't make shots. But it was Josiah Jordan-James with nine, and Awaka had 11 for Tennessee. So there's your X factor. But for Tennessee to be in this ball game, for this to be where you want it to be for all the tournament fans in the last five minutes of this game, Jonas Adu's got to make his bunnies at the rim. He's got to finish at the rim against Creighton's bigs. Zakai Ziegler can't go one for whatever he went the other night. And Dalton Connect has got to make threes. He can't have a one for eight night shoot the three ball. He's got to make some perimeter jump shots. It really starts with those three. As much as everybody talks about getting Vescovi's offense on track or Josiah Jordan James' offense, it centers around those three guys, Adu, Connect, and Zakai Ziegler for Tennessee. That's interesting. Do you, do you want the game officiated a certain way, considering we know going in, Creighton simply just doesn't foul. and they've been, they're, they're one of the best in the country all year. But when you said when you run and jump and you play gaps like Tennessee does, how do we know that the – how will you know that Tennessee is defending the way that you want them to based on how the game is called? Well, I, I think that, one, that the bigs have to stay out of foul trouble. So mm-hmm. if it's ticky-tack and you get Jonas, they do, and Tobey and Toby Awaka is, is a great rebounder who likes to foul, okay? You know, they want a game. They like to be physical. Tennessee does. Now, they're not going to – you know, it, it's not beat you up, beat you up like, you know, old-school Michigan State basketball or anything like that. But they want to play physical. Uh, they, they can get handsy. Um, they like to push you around in the paint. So Tennessee wants to be let them play. Uh, they don't they don't want a ticky tack deal. And but they want to play without fouling too. I mean, it, Rick Barnes goes crazy when his team picks up cheap fouls. Mm-hmm. Um, so they want to play physical. I, I think just a typical tournament game. I mean, I won't say officials swallowed their whistles last weekend, but not regular season basketball, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's tournament time, and they're going to let you beat each other up a little bit. It doesn't matter for Creighton. They're just not going to foul. Um, it, it's really an amazing stat when you look at where they are and the, and the numbers that they have. They just don't foul. Mm-hmm. They play really good defense without fouling. It's, it's a terrific job by that coaching staff and mm-hmm. the players to stay disciplined to understand that. Tennessee's going to obviously try to attack. Um, they they want to try to, you know, get out and go a little bit, get downhill and see if they can pick up a foul on somebody here and there. But that's just not Creighton style. But if you ask ask Rick Barnes, he does not want a game where both teams are in the bonus with, you know, 10 minutes to play in the first half, right? I mean, that's just not the way. He he wants an up and down high possession game. That's where he's most comfortable. It's where his team's most comfortable. And and he wants the officials to let him play. He doesn't want the officials to create their involvement in the game, if you will. We're talking with Brent Hubs of VolQuest.com. Brent, you mentioned the potential foul trouble with the bigs for Tennessee. With Adu only typically playing about 25 minutes a game, I assume that'll be higher when he's guarding Kalkbrenner. And then Awaka, who gets a little foul happy, as you mentioned. Are you concerned at all that we might see uh, Creighton kind of focus on Kalkbrenner a little more the way we have at certain points during the season and that that could give Tennessee a little bit of trouble? Well, I think both of these teams want to establish an inside presence yeah. in this game early. And I think because there's going to be so much attention from, and there always is, from teams defending Creighton. Because what's the storyline with Creighton? Great three-point shooting team, right? It's all about the three ball. It's all about the three ball. And you kind of want to forget that, that they have a big man in the post who can score and can do things. It's kind of like that football team that everybody says, well, they're pass happy. They throw it all the time. And then you look up at the average 200 yards a game running the football. Like, there's Creighton wants to play in the paint. It's not like there's five guys standing behind the arc playing around the world. I mm-hmm. mean, they, they, they want to play at the rim, too. I think both of these teams are going to try to establish a paint presence early in this game um, and, and get going and get into an offensive flow. I don't think they're going to come out unless you just leave somebody wide open. I don't think you're going to come out and it's going to just be a three-point bizarre bizarre, – I can't say the word – out of of the gate. I don't think both teams are just going to be exclusive to the three-point line. I think both teams are going to try to get to the rim, force the defenses to move, and see what they can get out of that action, whether that's an open look from the perimeter or you finish at the rim or you get a foul on a big man inside. I, I think that's the way you'll start this game. 
That's Brent Hubs from VolQuest.com. Brent, we appreciate your time. Uh, I would wish you good luck, but I'm not going to uh, on Friday. <laughs> but I appreciate you joining us nonetheless. Absolutely. It should, should be a great game. I, I, I do think for everybody who saw Tennessee play against Texas, if you're a Creighton fan, you're probably going, hey, this is I love this matchup. This team can't shoot. That's not Tennessee's M.O. This, Tennessee has been thought of as a really good team this year with a chance to make a run in the tournament because they've got more offensive firepower than they've had the last couple of years. It just didn't show up against Texas. I'll be surprised if they go back-to-back -back games like that. Well, let's cross our fingers and hope for another aberration. No, uh, Brent, we appreciate you <laughs> for sure. And uh, enjoy the game Friday, whatever that looks like. Thanks, guys. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. That's Brent Hubs. keep Ziegler out of the paint. That's Brent Hubs from VolQuest.com. Super shifty, super yeah, and fast squat, twitch. A little squatty five body. Nine, not a big dude. Did, Tennessee just a slight fave. Got to stay in front. The weather, two and a half last I yeah, saw. Two and a half. Uh, Ken Palm's got it at basically a coin flip, so we will see. That's the show for today. We got on the rails after the first hour. We'll see what happens tomorrow. I heard that Sports Radio.